Hi there. Here's the solution to AP free response practice question number three over the normal distribution. So we're talking about a filling machine filling hopper cars with bauxite ore. So when functioning pro uh, properly, the amounts of ore that are loaded into each car are approximately normally distributed. So there is our shape. The mean is 70 tons. There's our center. And the spread is 0.9 tons. So the information given to us here at the very beginning suggests that if X represents the amount of ore that is put into a particular hopper car, it is distributed normally. With this mean, 70 tons, and a standard deviation of 0.2 nine tons. So understand there's variability in all kinds of processes. So a hopper car pulls up to the filling machine, the machine fills it up. You don't get exactly 70 tons of ore. It might be a little bit more. It might be a little bit less. There's always variability in processes such as this. So the normal distribution with this center and spread is trying to capture the if you will, distribution of amounts with a mean and a standard deviation, which represents that variability. So if the mean is actually more than 70, the loading mechanism is overfilling. So we want to make sure that even though there's variability, that mean sticks around 70. So if the filling equipment is functioning properly, so here we have an assumption. If the filling equipment is loading the hopper cars properly, what proportion of the time will the weight in a randomly selected car be 70.7 tons or more? So it probably helped to draw a picture of what's going on here. So we'll draw a little normal distribution and we'll label it. So here's the mean of 70 tons and the standard deviation of 0.9 tons. So understand, uh, we are interested in how often a randomly chosen car will have a weight of 70.7 .7 tons or more. So 70.7 .7 is not quite one standard deviation. 70.9 would be one standard deviation above the mean. So maybe we're about here. So I am interested, if I read the question carefully, here's where 70.7 .7 is. So I'm interested in this much weight in the hopper car or more. So this is the area under the normal distribution that I would like to calculate. That area will represent the percentage of the time that this will occur. So recognize here that uh, we are going to get a, a significant amount of area where in particular we get more than 70.7 tons, even though the average is 70. Uh, we still can get some variability and get more than that in the hopper car. So to find that exact amount, let's actually calculate a z-score. So this 70.7 .7 I'm going to turn into a z-score using our z-score formula. So 70.7 .7 is the observation I'm interested in. The mean of this process is 70. The standard deviation is 0 0.9. So if I calculate that, 70.7 .7 minus 70 divided by 0 0.9, that gives me a z-score of 0.78. So notice that 0.78 is the z-score for the left boundary or for the lower boundary of this area. I don't have, I'll write that here, 0.78 is my z-score. So on the right side of this area, that right side of that region continues and continues. So we're going to use a right boundary or an upper boundary of a z-score of 10 when we're using the shade norm command. So understand we've calculated z-scores. Now we're going to use the shade norm command in order to find that actual area. So we'll switch over to the calculator. Notice I purposely left it this way. I have not cleared the previous drawing, so it is important to go back to the home screen, second mode. We need to clear the drawing. That is second, program, and then enter twice. There we go. Clear the home screen again, and now we'll go to the shade norm command, second variables. Press the right arrow to the draw menu. There's the shade norm command. And just as we mentioned before, the lower boundary is the z-score of 0.78. 
the upper boundary, then we will use z-score of 10. That is high enough to get an accurate area. The z-scores have mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1, so we don't need to change those. Let's draw this then. And this will give us the percentage that we are looking for. It's about 0.218. So let's go and label that. This area is 0 0.218. So the proportion of the time that we will get a weight of 70.7 tons or more is 21.8% of the time. And remember, this is under the assumption that the filling equipment is functioning properly. So even though the mean is 70, sometimes we're going to get, if you will, more than 70 tons in the hopper car. And that actually will happen 21.8%. That's a little more than 20%. That's a little more than one out of every five cars. So that's actually reasonably likely even when the machine is functioning properly, even when we have a mean set at 70. So we've answered part B then. Suppose the weight of ore in a randomly selected car really is 70.7 tons. Would that fact make you suspect that the loading mechanism is overfilling cars? So when we say is overfilling cars, we mean do you think that the actual mean of the process is more than 70? Is it likely? Is it likely that the mean is really more than 70? More than 70 tons. That's really what this question is asking. And the truth is there's no reason to think that the actual mean of the process is any more than 70. And ultimately that's because this 70.7 tons, even when the mean is set to 70, 70.7 tons or more than that will be observed 21.8% of the time. That's one out of every five cars. So if you randomly pick a car, one out of five, it's reasonably likely you might get one of those five. One out of every five times, you will. So there's no reason here to believe that we have a mean that is any more than 70. There's no reason to believe that we are overfilling cars. So I would say no. A weight of 70.7 tons or more is reasonably likely. twenty one point eight percent of the time if the mean of the filling process is really seventy as it's supposed to be so there we go.